Have you ever wondered how when you look at a painting that has a lot of depth into it, you see something what artists call atmospheric perspective? This is where the background trees are faded way in the back, and then your foreground trees really jump out at you. I'm going to show you today a simple, easy acrylic tip on how to make this happen. Oil painters have their own tricks, but acrylic painters, we've got this nifty thing. So hang in there with me, follow along in this fast little quick tip and trick tutorial on getting atmospheric perspective in your paintings. Check it out. Hi, this is Ginger Cook. This is a underpainting for a painting I'm working on with my online live classes. And as I was starting the painting, I realized that perhaps it might be fun to just do a special YouTube tip on what to do with uh, transparent heavy body mixing white by Liquitex. It's um, sometimes Golden makes something called a zinc white, which works pretty well too, but, but I've been using this for years and I just love it. And let me show you what it does. What I want to try to do, and this is again, just an underpainting, that's all we've got so far, is I've put in a background using um, a, a burnt sienna, let me just turn the plate around so you can see it, using burnt sienna and white, a little yellow oxide, I put in this background and using a little bit heavier bits of the color, I put this tree in a little bit of this while it was still wet, and then I came over and I added some ultramarine blue to the yellow oxide to put these little trees in. Now what I want to do is push these back and make these come forward. You see that? These I don't want that big. So let me show you, and this is nice and dry, all right? This is real important. You got to make sure that's dry. So what I'm going to do is take a clean brush, and I'm going to put um, some transparent Liquitex Mixing White out on the plate. This is the best kept secret. I'm telling you, if you're doing acrylic painting, if you don't own this stuff, this is just great. So let me just take a plate, and I'm going to put some out on here like this. And let me show you what it does. What I'm going to do is a clean, dry brush. No water on it, guys. No water on it. I'm going to wipe it around. And I might even take a piece of paper like this, this little blue piece of paper, and I'm going to wipe off the excess. And then I'm going to just move the plate out of the way and come over here like this and just lightly brush over my background. Do you see what I'm doing? I might even pick up a little extra paint off this plate. Now look what happens to these little trees here that were so dark. They start to disappear. If you use titanium white, you would just paint them out. So here's a little more white paint. I'm going to come up here on our uh, cover here and I'm just sort of rubbing this over the way you might smear chalk kind of using the side of the brush like that. I'm just going to come all up here like this. Now, you see how the, the background sort of disappearing. Now watch what happens when we do these trees. This is the real test. It's going to start to disappear. I'm going to get a little bit more paint here, wipe most of it off. And very gently, now I'm not pushing very hard. You can do a few layers of this. Don't try to do it all at once if it's not. There you go. We are pushing these back into the fog. You see that? See how, how these little trees are just disappearing. And because we're saying that they're in, they're behind, the, now look what happens to these trees are starting to come out because what we did was we just pushed these trees back. Does that make sense? We just pushed these trees back, and uh, which I think is absolutely cool. Now, I'm going to get a little more mixing white. See, they're starting to disappear, okay? I don't want them gone all together. That's why I painted them in the first place. I'll put a little bit more out here and just pick them out. Now, if I wanted, for instance, to have a little bit more beige, I could take a tiny bit of, um, of uh, raw sienna. Let me just turn the phone off. And um, make sure that the phone's off. And... and um, I could put a little bit of raw sienna with it because you can mix, not with white paint, but it, the, think about transparent white. Maybe I'll put it in the plate so you can see it. A little bit of raw sienna. That's way too much. Let's come over here like this. A little tiny bit of raw sienna. And it would give it more of a beige tone when I did this, but it will still start pushing this back. And I don't have to do much like that. Just push it back like this. And these little trees now are starting to disappear, particularly this one. But this one's kind of way back. So you can kind of see it, but then you don't. You see that? You can kind of see it, but you don't. And then that pushes these trees forward because we said that these were pushed back. All right. Now, 
Can you do this more than one time? Absolutely. For instance, suppose you felt like you needed some more trees somewhere else. Just dry this. This is a great tip. Just to dry this. This is how you get these faraway backgrounds. Oil painters for years have always had, um, had always, always had um, like a, a zinc white. But acrylic painters, Golden makes it, not too many others make it. I'm going to take a little brush now, and I'm going to take a little water on it, and I'm, because I've dried that, now what I want to do is I'm going to go back over here with my titanium, a little bit of uh, a burnt sienna, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to say I wanted some little, little tiny leaves back up in here. Now that's another way to put something in the background, is just put enough white with it where it sort of disappears. You know, you can do that too. See, here's some little leaves I could say some little tree action that was happening back here way in the background. So a little bit of white and uh, just a little bit of white and burnt sienna. Now that's the titanium, not the mixing white. I just want you to see the difference when we do this. Say that there's a little bit more of that. And I'm using a very small brush because I want to say that these leaves are smaller. Now one trick is to take your mister bottle. I have just a fine mist bottle. Mist a little squirt of water and uh, make sure that I have this up here. I want to say up here like this. Here's some little tiny leaves up here in this tree. So I've got this sort of background that's really not saying much of anything. Now my canvas size here is about 6 by 8 so this would be actually super easier if you're using a bigger canvas and not fooling around with all these little tiny brush strokes. Alright now let's say I've done that. Now I'm just going to take my brush like this and I'm going to add some stem you know, some little branches like this, like that. Maybe put some in here like this. And again, I'm touching a little tiny bit of water on my uh, palette paper here. Okay, so I'm going to say that there's some little branches coming in here like this. I don't want too many, just something to indicate that, you know, that the tree is coming up like that. Just something. Um, Maybe there's something sticking off of here like this. Now this is just, that was just burnt sienna. If I add a little burnt umber, I can make a darker branch. It, depending on whether you're using burnt umber or burnt sienna, you can say that there's some trees coming back in here. Now in the final picture, I'm going to have some trees in front of these bushes. So I really don't have any need to put any, just much of, a, of any branches in here. I can indicate some branches back in here if I want. Just like that. Just indicate there are some back in here. And you can layer this. This is what's so keen. You can layer this. Now, okay, so we've got a little titanium white, a little bit of yellow oxide, and a tiny bit of ultramarine blue, not much, 1%. Let's just say I wanted to add some more branches to this, more leaves that are kind of more in front, okay? This is my next layer. You can layer the mixing white in what you're doing. You can layer it, bring, push things forward, bring it back. You can layer it. Maybe I want a little bit more yellow in here like this. A little yellow oxide. I'm just saying, it just depends on how much you want to fool around with this stuff. But you absolutely can layer it. Say that there's some, you know, brighter branches, brighter colors here. Now all I have to do is just dry that, okay? Now dry it really well because if this doesn't dry, you're out of it. It just doesn't work. All right, so you saw where I dried that, and I, and I really have. I've tested it and I've dried it. And all I have to do is come back with a dry brush and my transparent. This is a new one because I, that other one I put in water. Dry brush. I'm going to kind of spread it out here on the plate and kind of thin it out. And I can come over these branches just like this, just like this again with this and say that's a little bit too much. Say that we have put this made this little layer of a brush a, a little layer of burnt sienna and mixing white um, disappear. And if I don't want it that white, I'll put a little bit of burnt sienna with it. I didn't want it quite that white, so I've got a little bit of burnt sienna 
on top of that. And this is how I'm pushing this, these little branches here, these little twigs, whatever I said happen, I push them way into the background like that. Now, if for some reason you got carried away with this, and you thought, gosh, this is all right, but I really didn't want it. I wanted some, but I didn't want to take that much. You can take a little water and remove some of it. So you don't want any water on your brush in the first place if you got too much. But personally, I kind of like um, I kind of like what we have there because you see that's that's all all in the background. Then later I can then say, all right, so this is my far back. Uh, this is my background. These trees are in front, and I can reinforce that if I want by coming back here like this and reinforcing the fact that these trees are a little bit brighter and darker than these trees. Like here on the right hand side, I want these to be more uh, pronounced. So I can come back here and even do a second layer of bushes and stuff over there, like that. But so that brings this in forward because the farther things are away, you know, the more hazy they become. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to have some trees in front of this and some rocks and this is just our background painting. But I think it's kind of interesting how you can do that. And um, I really quite like the effect it gets. And if I wanted to say, for instance, just as another example of what you can do with, of, of transparent mixing white, maybe I want to come right in here. Ooh, better dry that real quick and I'll show you this trick. Maybe I want to come in here and say that there's some clouds coming up in here. Just just using pure transparent mixing white like this, I can come here and suggest clouds, but they're very light. So they're not going to be as dynamic. So there's so much you can do to change your background just with using this. Liquitex Heavy Body Transparent Mixing White. It is a great little background uh, trick for artists. I think I'm, now, I'm, now you've got me started. I want to push this even further back and I can do that. And this is our trick. Just like that. I'm going to push that back. I've got too much burnt sienna with it. So I'll add a little mixing white to that and just say that this little branch here, this little tree is in the background and just sort of out, out of sight here. This is how we're doing it. Just out of sight want a little bit more of that transparent mixing white right in here like that. Tap that on. There we go. This is all mist. See how we did that? It's all mist. And this is one of the great things you can do with this. It's also good for clouds. But how to put your background back. And I think I feel like what I've got to show you now is what happens when you put your trees. And let's just say I had a tree coming up here in front of that. I think I better show you for the effect of it because otherwise you're going, yeah, I don't get it. So here, let's take a tree. I'm going to throw that brush away. don't like it. Take something smaller. Boy, they, when the brushes fail, they fail. All right, I'm going to say I want a tree that stops up here. And I'm going to just put a few little dots in here like that. Remember, trees are fatter at the bottom. And I might just turn the canvas sideways. So there's my little tree up here like that. Now, you see this tree, and um, maybe I'll just have it curve a bit like that, this tree. And uh, let's see, let's pull it, pull it this way. All right, now let's put another one in that can't be by itself. I'm going to say I've got a nice big one coming here like that. See, it's fatter on this end. A nice big tree here. Okay, so a nice big tree here. And again, this is just the underpainting of the trees. This doesn't mean diddly squat here, you guys. This is just the underpainting. Here we've got another one coming back up here. Maybe it's crossing over this one going up. Like that. Way in the background. <laughs> but you can get the idea, can't you? I'm going to have some more that are coming off the rocks, but I don't want to put them in right now. So I've got my rocks coming right here like this. So, you know, do I want any more little trees here? Yeah, maybe I could put 
And this is a good trick. Where's our little tiny brush again? Um, dropped it in the water somewhere. Here, I'll show you. Now I'm going to do some, some very defined little tiny branches here that I want darker. And the trick for this is to make sure that you're, when you're trying to do a small branch, pull your brush like this and twist it. you got to do something real small. Make sure you're doing that. And just paint with the tip. And I'm going to come up here and say that here is, a, these, are the, these are the little branches we had in the foreground now. We're forking out like this. And I'm pinching it between branches. I'm telling you what. The reason you're not getting thin branches is how hard you hard you press on the uh, brush, how much liquid's on the brush, and uh, whether or not you pulled it to a point. Those are some key factors in getting a very very thin branch. And maybe I'm going to say it's coming this way, like that. It's going to come over kind of in this direction. And uh, maybe I've got one coming up over here. These are kind of lonely, so I'm going to say that there's something coming up this way. You don't have to show the whole thing either. There, so now you see how the background kind of disappears. Do you see that? But these, so you're talking about layers and layers of stuff. How patient are you? Because if you're patient, you can do some really neat things with this, with the mixing white, transparent mixing white. Do your background, just fade it out. Do another one. Everybody loves how Thomas Kincaid, you remember how he has his little backgrounds and how it, it, the way in the mist, they've got this sort of misty look to them. Well, mixing white is a great way for acrylic artists to achieve that. He, he painted it in oils, but if you want, if you want to say that, that you want that kind of effect, that's a good one. Now I'm going to start painting on these trees a little bit, putting a little burnt umber in of ultramarine blue together and darken this tree. I'm going to come up here like this. This is a pretty big tree, like that, saying that's a big tree. But already this is taking shape, isn't it? I mean, you know, you're thinking about it. Um, let's see, I'll need this real thin up here, like that. Another thing to do if you're talking about wanting to do very thin lines, which use canvas that's use linen canvas. See, I didn't. Um, Rinse that properly. Rinse the brush. You gotta rinse the brush. What you may not know about uh, what you may not know about this is that your if your acrylic paints, think about it, the logic of this. If your acrylic paints are drying on the canvas, what are they doing to your brush? So every once in a while just rinse your brush off. I promise you, you gotta do that. Every once in a while I just want to rinse your brush off. I think I wanna kind of widen this tree here at the trunk. Like that. There. All right. So I'm liking that. Okay. So you see how we got this really cool. Now I've got, I've got I promise you, I've got another, some other branches coming up this way, and I've got some other trees. I feel like um, I, had, I haven't put any of the highlights or anything on, on this tree yet, because I like to, you've seen me do it with a palette knife, where I take a tree like this, and if that's my um, outline, then I would take a palette knife and actually fix these trees up, which is another video altogether. But this is how we're doing it. This is how you take transparent mixing white and put something into the background. And again, uh, you know, check in for some other videos on how we uh, finish these trees because it, it's going to look very nice. I think I'll do one more and show you how I'm going to finish these trees. Okay? This is Ginger Cook. Uh, saying that if you like this video, I would appreciate your commenting below, because um, I always appreciate what you have to say about these things. And I hope this has been helpful, and thank you for watching.